Welcome back to Texas. Welcome back to the cottage. If you hear I sound a little different, Romeo and I have been under the weather since arriving back in Texas. So we've spent the last couple of days trying to rest, but I've got to get up and start moving my body. We haven't been able to dive back into renovation projects as quickly as I wanted to just because we were allowing our bodies to rest. But I feel like today I'm feeling a little bit better. I don't sound great, but I'm feeling a little bit better and I just want to move my body. Hopefully it'll get me through it. So I thought about some things that I could do that was a little lighter and a little bit fun. So we are currently in the living room right now and we've been making some amazing progress on the living room. I have three episodes of the living room makeover live. Um, and even before that we were doing demo, but we've done some major pretty progress. We DIY'd our hearth. We restored this vintage mantle I found. I DIY built these bookshelves. We also did the lime wash kind of plaster look on the fireplace wall, hung up our TV. And there is one thing that if you don't follow me over on my vlog channel, you wouldn't have known that we got was a new rug. This rug is from Leloy. It's woven, so it's in their higher price point line, but it had all of the colors in it that I knew I wanted for the space. It picked up the green that's in the millstone gray paint on the bookshelves. It had lots of other colors in it that I could really play with when bringing in furniture in the space, which is what we're going to be getting to next. And, and of course, we already have our couch. So there are still some things that we need for the space. The two chairs that are in here are actually for our bedroom. We've just been using them temporarily to have extra seating. I've got some poofs here that I love that we're trying to play around with. The coffee table is just temporary. So all of these furniture pieces is just because we've been living here and we've trying to make it a little more easier on us. I have been looking for months online at estate sales at everywhere I can think of for chairs and a coffee table and nothing speaking to me. I want to find a coffee table that has a brass and wood mixture it and it doesn't exist or I haven't found it yet. So if you if you know of, of something like that, please let me know. I want it to feel heavy and be quality. I don't want glass and brass. You see a lot of those. I don't want that. It's too light for the space. I want like dark wood and brass feet or brass inlay and ha I can't find it. Well, we will be doing decorating once I find those pieces and also finishing out all of the trim work, doing our window treatments and finishing out this door. And that's it, and the living room will be completed, but I have to find the right pieces of furniture. So for today's video, I wanna decorate our bookshelves, the ones that we built, in two ways. One in a lighter, brighter, more airy version, and then one with a little more stuff, because I tend to like stuff. I tend to like decorating bookshelves with lots of things, and I have lots of stuff for us to play with. So you can kind of think of this as my guide to decorating bookshelves. So I'm going to give you my tips on what I do and everyone's going to do them a little differently. But here are the things that if you want to do them like me, you're probably going to need for sure books. I love hardback books. I love to get them from thrift stores and estate sales. I love them vintage. The older the better and the colors that I gravitate towards more are jewel toned. So I also look for contents that really speak to me like art and architecture and travel and poetry and classic novels. You're also going to need art that fits the size of your bookshelves. So I designed our bookshelves to be 17 inches high. So I just need art that's going to fit in those bookshelves. More so rectangular or smaller pieces of art really work well in bookshelves. Lighting elements. So if you have a plug in your bookshelves that can be hidden, definitely recommend having a lamp that you can put on. It creates a great mood. If you don't have that, bookshelves are really hard to put real flames on, like real candles. So I recommend LED candles. They have some great ones now. I'll leave my favorites linked for you that really create that mood and give you the candle look without the danger of having a lit flame. And of course, for candles, you'll need some brass candle holders. You know, I've got tons of those. 
statement pieces. I would recommend having large scale statement pieces that could stand alone like this gorgeous head of a man that I have and also small statement pieces that you can kind of snuggle in with other things and collect and layer on top of books. Florals and of course vases to put them in. So you can either do real or dried or silk flowers. I usually gear towards dried florals because it's not something that I have to take care of. I can kind of arrange them how I want them and they kind of stay forever. Vessels and bowls. So these vessels are essentially vases. These can stand alone without any florals in them at all. And then also bowls. These also become statement pieces. So they can stand alone, they can layer on top of something else, and it gives you a different height and texture. And the last thing I would recommend are strands. I love going to the Rose Bowl flea market and getting these strands of different beads. They have some that are chunky and shaped differently, colorful or neutral, and they lay in a different way that another piece of decor just doesn't do for a bookshelf. So I always like to have a few of those to mix in with everything else. Well, welcome to my boutique. I truly have been curating so many amazing things secondhand things from thrift stores and estate sales over the last two years or so. So we have lots to work with. Key is to not have every shelf the same, but have them all sisters, all complementing. So we want a variety, but we still want some cohesion, if that makes any sense. Alike but different. Some of the art that I do have here, I don't have for the art, I have for the frame. Like this one, for instance, great frame, the art itself isn't exactly what I would like, but I have some loose art that we can kind of play with too. This size is like perfect, like either up or sideways. Kind of eight by 10, 11 by 14 size is really, really good for bookshelves. This is a pair. I love them, how pretty those would be up there. So I'm definitely taking these. So I think when it comes to doing a more minimal bookshelf, you have to go with bigger items. At least that's how my brain is thinking of it. So when i think about art you know these are on the smaller side so it's going to naturally need something else sitting next to it otherwise it's just going to look too small but the bigger art can stand alone or with one thing next to it i actually bought this piece of art at an estate sale just for the print the mat and the frame and everything wasn't my style but i wanted it for the print and i think it was like a 75 percent off day or something so i want to take it out and see how big it is and see if i have a frame um, that works for it and then I have these two but I don't think these will work because they're tall but they have birds and leaves and butterflies they were really pretty they're kind of like mates Well, that did not make a very big piece of art, but I do like it better. I think that looks a little better. It matches a statue that I have, like a little Greek kind of statue, but I put the glass behind the print. I don't like glare of glass. So, okay, well we have this one that I made one. We're gonna start with the simplistic wall. More minimal, more breathing room, not so crowded. I'm gonna really challenge myself on this one because I tend to like a lot of stuff. I like to start with art because it adds a lot of the height and I get to build in front of it. It's kind of the thing that goes in the back. And so when I think about art, I like art at eye level. There are no rules for me. Like it's like whatever feels good, whatever looks good, whatever looks good to you, do it. So just naturally art is at eye level when you hang it on a wall. So since our bookshelves are so big, I can put art at eye level. If it's at eye level, it'll be on this shelf somewhere. So this has a lot of flowers. I have this, I actually stole this from the bathroom and I had real hydrangeas in it for a long time, but obviously they kept dying and it would make me sad. So I got some silk ones just from the craft store. They're actually really pretty. That picture has a lot of the same kind of elements. So maybe we could do, maybe we could do opposite so not on the same side but put it down here and if i really like it on the bookshelf i can always get some more from the craft store i also like to put things in threes and group them in threes i think that is like a design rule so i need something behind kind of here and then maybe here i have this bowl this is from olive atelier it's a marble bowl it's so pretty i don't feel like on bookshelves you necessarily need to put something in a bowl more of a statement structural piece maybe we need an art print i do i love these for some reason i have two of them they both have the same coloring so each would work i like that this one has a little more rust 
here and that's kind of the coloring that's in that art and here maybe it'll pull i like to think about color and how you know this has a little bit of that color but that has a lot of that color and kind of balancing and and pulling colors onto different shelves it makes them look more like sisters it actually looks pretty pretty good so since i have the plug here and there's not a way for me to get the cords i could make a way but there's not a way for me to get the cords going up this is a natural place for a lamp. The lamp shade on this was not with it. It was just like this without a bulb. And then I looked in the shades and I was like, this is kind of cute. It kind of had like a little bit of a, a bumpy kind of polka dot texture on it. I was like, maybe it'll work. I think I paid a total of like $3 for this little cutie little lamp. Figure out this co the cord kind of situation here. Oh, oh that's so pretty. You know, instead of it just being so flat over here, it actually has some light in it. It's, you know, kind of a group here, but then one singular thing on this side. And then maybe the next shelf could be more center, center focused. And then the next shelf could be kind of like the opposite. It could have like a statement and, a, you know, like trying to change up the way that you do each shelf in terms of height and items. So that there's not like flowers sitting on top of each other or lamps sitting on top of each other or candle holders sitting, the lighting elements or statement pieces. So you don't want that straight line happening because that's going to look a little bit weird to your eye. I didn't introduce any books here, so I definitely want to introduce books on the second shelf. I might be able to bring another lighting element here with the LED candles and kind of like stack them or something. This is the history of England and this is the life of Rembrandt. Maybe we could stack them. This one is really pretty and really low. You talk about candles, they can get high pretty quickly. So we need low candlesticks for, for bookshelves. So this became like a five. More is always more for me, so I'm trying to limit it. So going up to the next shelf, I want to do that one more statement and more not so gathered or not so layered. Love him. I got him in an estate sale. I did pay up for him because he is heavy. I don't remember how much I paid for him, but he was definitely over $100. But he's so like, he's not like the ones you see at the store that you buy for some reason. He's like, someone did that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. He, he, he spoke to me. He looks this way. So I like him on this shelf and I think he looks good on the shelf because he looks into the room instead of out of the room. So I think about that stuff too, where they focus you. So he's looking into the focal point, which is the fireplace. Since this kind of like neutral, natural color is on this side and he's the same color, I'm going to put it on the opposite side so that it kind of has you know, a flow here. These are small books. I could do larger books, maybe a bowl. So this is like that same kind of rust color that's in that painting. It's pulled down here. I can continue that color up and it makes it look really cohesive. This is Art Nouveau, a big book. It's a, got it in an estate sale on a bookshelf. Same with this one, Dictionary of Art and Artists. So a neutral one kind of calms the red one, but it still brings some color. Can we stack them like this bowl? I actually got from Amazon when I was working on, you know, getting and gathering some things for the kitchen. So cool. I'll leave it linked. It's like, it's kind of light. It's a wooden bowl. So let's see if this looks good. Is it too big? From here, it looks good. Oh no, it looks really good. You know, as you get higher on the shelves and you start to use some of your good pieces, it gets harder. It gets more challenging. It's very top shelf. I think I might do that one next because I want to just do all books straight across, like all books, like just clean. I know it will feel like a lot, but I think in a way it'll be really simplistic and it'll actually work with the lighter area thing because I'm not using a lot of books. I've been collecting them for a while and I pulled some that had more neutrals 
like dark, dark blues and that rust color that we've been working with to pull that color up here to you. I like when they vary in height too, so I don't want too many that are the same height right next to each other. Another great place to find old books is like when libraries have discount days or clean out days. I know a local library here, like on a Wednesday or something, they'll have like a, a backyard kind of sale and they'll get rid of some older books. I absolutely love that. Love that. We have the final shelf on our minimal bookshelf. We need a piece of art maybe because we didn't do one on the lower shelf. This piece of art matches my man up there. So it might be good to tie in. I need to use it over here so it ties and balances him on the other side. You know, kind of keeping those like like things. So definitely gonna save him for over here. I like this one. This one's not vintage or anything. I actually got, this is a, a new one I got at the craft store. I just kind of liked it and it blends in. It kind of just acts like a, a, a visual texture. It's not a, a, just a change. It just blends in really, really nicely. So since we have so much color happening in like bringing in that rust, I think that this might work good up there. See how it just kind of blends? It just is like nondescript. Since we don't have a lighting element up high, we just have these two. I'm gonna bring one up higher. I actually have LEDs in the pillar candle and you can set them to a timer. So then you don't have to get up there and turn them off and it saves the battery. I also have this brass tray. I don't know if you'll be able to see it from up there, but I was kind of thinking I could do something like that up there. Let me put this up there and see. Oh, this smells good. Huh. These were the expensive ones. The pillar candles, the nice ones that wave. Look at that. It waves. <laughs> Added some swans. I'm not gonna overcomplicate it. This is our simple one. I'm not overcomplicating it. If I do more, it's gonna be more. collected the more side the not so simplistic side but still looking really good this is actually what I normally would do I wouldn't refrain so much although I'm so glad I kind of challenged myself to do that because that looks really really good so we have our two statue picture let's try and put him down let's let's see about that okay I also have this one that's not new either I got this from the craft store but I really like them they're the, like I feel like stores and new products are kind of trying to mimic the style of the vintage and things that we all love. I think that it's it's kind of going that direction. Um, so I thought it was really great. It had the same colors as the millstone gray paint that we painted the bookshelves. And then I have the snowy one. This one's more winter. It is still winter right now, but kind of coming out of winter now. But it kind of looks good with, you know, with the statues. Maybe that's a good way to think about it. Start with a thing, like a specific type, like books or art or something and then spread them out so if i have art here i'll put art here kind of thing and then i'll put one on that shelf we need lighting elements for sure i think that this might be too tall though i think oh yeah see it's like that much too tall even though i like the scale of these i think that they're pretty but this is not gonna work this one still has size and heftiness because it's so round um but it's a little shorter so i'm hoping that this will work yeah, that works totally. We also have some more pillars, so we can kind of incorporate the same elements just in different ways, and they'll look good together. So I want to kind of like balance them. So if I put paper candles on that shelf, I'm not going to do them here. So I'm going to move them down. So this one's going to go up here. Brass base that we can use, and these aren't hydrangeas, but they do look like hydrangeas. Hydrangeas? I, oh, I never know how to say that word. They do look similar and they are the exact flower in this piece of art. So that makes me happy. Creating some symmetry. We could add these in here. Steal some dried bits. I actually just found this vase at Goodwill. The day we landed here back in Texas for, I think I, think I paid $4.99 for it. I thought it was really pretty and I needed some things for the bookshelves, you know? So that'll go somewhere on this shelf. So I'm just kind of gathering my elements right now. 
We need books. That's, that's what I feel like is going to make this side so much fuller. Stack them and stack them this way on different sides and it, it creates more texture. Sometimes I like to lay one so that I could put something on it. <laughs> so I put my little pheasants. I think these are pheasants. I don't know. Comment if you know what bird this is. Moved these over, but I felt like it wasn't full enough. <laughs> what about layering art? I've never done that before. I also have thought about hanging art like that. Like I've seen people do that and it looks so good. I'm not gonna commit to that right now. Um, but what about layering this behind? It might give it a little more happening back here and fill out the space a little bit better. And then does this, can this stand alone? I feel like I need something. What about that? Feel a little more full, but keeping it, that actually looks really good. Okay, so we have flowers. Since I have books there and on the end, you know, maybe kind of like towards the center. So we could do, I have this brass bowl. I could kind of make us just, just a statement piece, not anything in it. I like to kind of move things forward and push things back. So they kind of create that visual depth. I have a collection of really beautiful encyclopedias. I am only missing one and I'm so sad about it. I think it's number three. We scoured the estate sale looking for number three. Couldn't find number three. <laughs> but they're so pretty. I love like the spine and just like all the detail, the texture. And I should naturally put them in order. Okay, one, two. We jump to four. Five and six. Seven. And so I'm gonna put nine up here and ten down here. Like now I need one to two things over here. Also, got this on Amazon. This is so cool. It has like the wicker and it's like a kind of a dusty chalky bottom. Look random as a statement. I have to step back and look at things. You can already start to see that it's fuller than the other side. I also have this guy and I want to get another one because I love this in the entryway and I want to de redecorate the entryway and I love this pot and I know where I bought it but I thought that this might be really pretty. I like to lay dried flowers like this especially down. I think these are, I got them during fall time actually at the hardware store and they might be a little baby's breath, dried baby's breath. I can't remember but I like the texture. A little bit taller. And tie in the green and also the flowers. These books are kind of an interesting kind of cornflower color. You know, I told myself in the beginning of like the pretty stage of this cottage is if I could make every room feel like a library, the feeling, the moodiness, the ambiance, everything, I had accomplished my goal. And this feels very library to me. So that is a win for me. I just, I love the feeling of a library. with both styles um, so let's hope I have enough books to do all of this if I do I accomplished another goal because I needed enough books to really experiment and do this bookshelf the way I wanted it okay these look really good this has a lot more color variation than the other side did I mean I'm just pulling from what I have some purples and <laughs> this one I love this one little masterpieces it's poetry from like amazing poets throughout the decades centuries the more curated more more is more side is complete
you guys enjoyed this video and decorating the bookshelves two different ways. Let me know if you are a more minimal type of decorating bookshelves kind of person or you like a little more things. I'm gonna live with both of these for a while and just see what happens. You know, maybe I'll find some more things we can mix in and it can, I love bookshelves because I love all of the collected things that I found from travels and thrift shopping and just, I remember where I got every piece and I feel like that makes it so special. So if you have bookshelves in your home, maybe this will inspire you to take everything off and just kind of look at it with fresh eyes and maybe do it a little more minimal for spring and then layer it up for fall or something like that with the seasons. Hoping that I am on the other side of not feeling well and we can dive into renovations in the next few days. I do have lots of projects here in the living room that I wanna finish. Also the kitchen that I wanna finish. We have to finish all of the cabinet doors to paint them, uh, get the oven installed, all of those things. And then we are gonna be moving back to the primary suite very, very soon. So I will see you guys on the vlog channel during the week. On the podcast, if you have not checked out my podcast, I had a really fun episode go live with my mom where we talked all about the home styles that she's had throughout the years because they, my parents are builders, so they've built many, many homes in different styles. And then my style and trends, and if we follow trends, so I will link it for you, subscribe to the podcast, so you can listen to us on the go and I will see you guys next Sunday for another renovation video here at the cottage. Bye guys!